Thank you, Plug and Play, for inviting me to your platform. I'm Reza Bahadi. I'm a senior director of strategic accounts at a company called Previdere. Previdere is an Italian verb, and it means to forecast or to look ahead, and it really sets the stage well for what we do as a company. We realized early on that market and industry business cycles are changing faster and with a lot more volatility than ever before. And it's becoming increasingly more important, but also more complex for companies to really get ahead of upcoming trend shifts or market turns. And unfortunately, a lot of companies are also often considering only internal factors when they're planning and forecasting for their business, when in reality, and oftentimes, a lot of business performance is actually dictated by clues and signals that are happening outside of the company's four walls. And with the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, there is an added new dimension or complexity that comes along with the, with the scenarios. And so what if, as a company, you could identify leading signals and clues and strongly correlated factors um, farther ahead of industry turns, um, you know, would you be able to make better decisions and more proactive moves across your organization and most importantly ahead of competition? And that's really our ultimate goal is being able to offer insights so companies can reduce risk or look for opportunities and capitalize on those. So what we do at, at Previdere is we, we go out and we collect the world's data all day every day from across 120 different economies. We collect things like consumer behavior, uh, income, unemployment trends, social trends, weather, uh, vehicle miles traveled, new car registrations. So all this data is collected in real time and brought into our ecosystem. And we go through a, a standardization process. We curate the data, we cleanse it, we get rid of noise, and really make it analytics ready for consumption. Now, thanks to cloud computing and our machine learning capabilities, we can now marry those millions of economic indicators with your company's internal historical performance data. So think of sales, volume, uh, shipments. We can even model markets, specific markets in different industries. And when we model and correlate those factors, we really look to uncover hidden business drivers and bring those to light so that supply chain and finance leaders have a much more accurate view of what factors are actually driving their business one month, three months, or 12 months out. And what's unique here is we also have a team of economists and industry analysts in-house that help interpret the results and make sure those models that are built uh, and the factors that are included make, make business sense. So here's an example. Um, this is, uh, you know, in green, you see historical performance data. This could be for your company over the last several quarters. And overlap to that in blue is one of those millions of economic indicators. The engine will process and scan back and forth and find indicators that overlap uh, at a strongest point. And in this particular example, you can see that the consumer mood index for age groups 18 to 24 seems to predict with a two-month offset. Now we're gonna do that at scale. We're gonna look at different data sets across different data categories and really narrow down the scope to a meaningful set of drivers and not only understand what those drivers are, but tell you how much they matter and also how far in advance each and every one of those indicators is predictive. And the result of that should be an economic baseline model. What does the future outlook hold if all else remains equal. That's essentially what we uh, empower companies to do. And you'll be able to drill down. So in this example here, you can see which of the indicators made it into the final model for what we're predicting, but we can also see which of those indicators are signaling an upward or a downward trend in business over the next consecutive months or quarters ahead. Now, 2020, is going to be a very interesting year. It's always going to require companies to have an always on dashboard or a way of monitoring upcoming risk, but also opportunities that they can capitalize on. And the analytics and the platform are consumed across different functional areas, but from, a, from an executive standpoint, strategy, finance, 
executives are interested in the insights and predictions so they can make better financial plans, but also supply chain and demand planning leaders, they're uh, on more of a, an operational standpoint looking to understand where there's going to be demand trends or shifts that they can uh, uh, use in their, in their respective areas. And then analytics groups uh, oftentimes want to get into the platform and actually model uh, ad hoc projects on their own. So we have a lot of customer engagements today. All really looking at understanding future headwinds and tailwinds of their business through the lens of economic data points. We raised about 29 million to date. We're backed by Microsoft and Norwest Ventures. We have a team of about 60 full-time employees and three offices and a, a variety of strategic partnerships in place. Now, companies are left in a vulnerable spot right now. You know, with the spread of the coronavirus, and essentially every plan or forecast has been largely thrown out the window for the rest of the year. Everyone's thinking about what comes next, what's gonna happen in the second half of 2020, where are my categories going, uh, where is there gonna be demand for my product, um, et cetera. And so more importantly, what does a return back to normal post COVID-19 look like for those companies? So our response to that is to support logistics, manufacturing and um, uh, CPG companies to really navigate through those uncertain times uh, in a couple of ways. So one is scenario planning. Uh, as a use case, we already work with several consumer goods customers that are in the midst of planning and reforecasting their business for the second half of the year, where we build what if scenario models. We're essentially modeling their business with more near term indicators. So drivers that are predictive one or two or four months out. And we build economic high side and low side scenarios on top, of, on top of the economic baseline models. Also, another way to look at how we tackle this is through relevant uh, uh, and current insights. We can definitely use indicators um, that have consistently signaled economic downward, downturns and, and recoveries, but this one is rather unique because it really focuses on a health pandemic, which is uh, largely unprecedented, unprecedented in the last few years. So we're adapting our approach and incorporating leading indicators that are based on their unique relevance to this health crisis. Um, you know, things like Google Trends on travel cancellations or restaurant and bar sales or vacation plans over the next six months. And then timeliness of, of COVID-19 indicators. You know, many, many government bureaus are publishing monthly or quarterly data where we've now gone to look at data that's becoming more readily available on a daily or weekly basis and use those in modeling short-term changes in the economy with respect to your business. Think of uh, a lot of data and consumer spend data that we get from China on automotive, restaurant, or online shopping trends or apparel trends. Any rebound in those markets are great indicators for most industries and customers that you are serving in your marketplace today. We can incorporate that into those models. With that, we love pilots, proof of values. The main goal of a POV is really to showcase our, our predictive capabilities. They're usually very quick, four to six weeks in length, and they're cost effective and, and relatively pain free since it's uh, uh, the, the lion's share of the work is managed by the, the Prevedary staff. We usually start at a couple of models and then work our way into helping operation, operationalize those within your, within your ecosystem. So with that, the world is really changing at a faster pace than ever before. And those companies that are looking to incorporate external data in a systematic and repeatable way are really going to be able to compete effectively and, and help overcome this downward trend that we're in right now. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Reza. Uh, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So, um, obviously, there's a lot of questions around was Prevedere able to predict COVID 19? Um, so, if you could maybe talk about you know, when you guys first saw some of these signals starting to play out in the models and, and what were some of the overlying or underlying, rather, what were those underlying trends 
across, you know, maybe consumer staples or, or automotive or other industries. Yeah, no, thanks, Harvey. Um, well, obviously, we couldn't have predicted the, uh, the crisis overall or any natural disasters. That's unfortunately something that we, you know, is not within our capabilities as well. Uh, if, otherwise, we would be trying to uh, predict the stock market or other scenarios and capitalize on those. But absolutely. So, you know, hourly numbers uh, of, of employers working or unemployment trends, number of, of uh, new cases emerging in different regions, as well as even uh, a number of deaths, uh, certainly are some of, the, some of the indicators that we monitor um, for a lot of companies. And, and those who are looking at doing scenario planning, you know, again, looking at economic baseline models and then looking at optimistic views, but also less, uh, uh, less optimistic or pessimistic views on, on modeling those. We do these at scale and across different regions and different categories where we look at, you know, what is the government doing? Are they reopening businesses? Are they, um, is the shelter in place being removed? What is the timeline for those? So these are all different signals and clues that we can incorporate into the models that we build out for, for our customer base. And are you also uh, working on data sets across the globe or just the United States or maybe United States and Europe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, to, to date we collect and curate and manage about 3 million, 3.1 million unique uh, time series uh, data points or signals, if you will. And these are across the globe. The majority uh, uh, is gonna be North American based just because that's where most of the data, data is readily available. Uh, but we go to all the public sources, uh, government bureaus, um, all the trade organizations ac across the globe. So there's really only a few um, uh, scarce uh, areas where we don't get a lot of data. But for the most part, we're fairly global. We model in Europe. We do a lot of modeling in, in, uh, in the APAC region. Uh, a lot of um, indicators in China are, um, um, you know, based on the, the changes going on in, in consumer spend and, and um, you know, the, the automotive markets are essentially indicators for other industries uh, in, the, in the months to come across different geographies as well. So fair, fairly global in, in nature and um, with, with, a, with a few exceptions, we have a, we have a global footprint of, of about 3.1 million data sets and we're, we're continuing to count. Most of these are, again, publicly available data sources. Now we also have um, uh, partnerships in place with um, um, different syndicated data providers like Nielsen. So we're directly connected to the Nielsen platform and we work with companies like IRI and, and others to augment our repository uh, to support modeling in, in those different regions as well. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Reza. We appreciate you spending some time with us this morning and hopefully everyone's staying safe and hopefully that you're able to help the rest of us get more of those consumer staples that we no longer can have access to. Absolutely. Thanks for having us on and um, happy to support anyone offline and can also help answer questions on the chat board. Yeah, actually, Reza, I think there are a few, if you don't mind, um, yeah. hanging around uh, to get to some of these in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you.